Hey guys, we are back with our podcast. I hope y'all are as excited because I am so stoked. Um, this is kind of gonna be like our first podcast all over again. A little reintroduction to everything and what we're doing, who we are, and all the goods. And you and gotta stop moving that cup. I'm sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> um, okay, so I think everybody probably knows who we are, but I'm Amber. I'm Bubba. Christian. We're going, we're going with Bubba? I mean... Let's go with just Bub. Bubba. Bub, yeah. I've never, I've never called myself Bub ever. How you doing, Bub? Everybody, call, everybody calls you Bub, actually. You'd be surprised. Um. So anyway, this is kind of just like a reintroduction to everything. I feel like that was so awkward. I actually want to cut all of that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just start. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Yes, please. No, we need an introduction because I hated that. It was so unorganized. It was so stupid. Yeah, but like, just once wo- it's two seconds in, it's over. You just like murder podcasts. I, I know, I know. So it's okay. <laughs> It's a freelance I'm podcast. Still gonna say, I'm still going to say something. I'm but keeping all that. this in, by the way. Keeping all of this in. Okay. So just, you done? Yeah. You're doing that thing. I am. You know what that thing is that you do? I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, anyway, so how was your day? What you did today? How was my day? What did I do today? Yeah. Um. Let's see. I got to work around nine. <sighs> and then I got off around five. <laughs> that's I about it I, don't, I didn't probably do much today I played with my pedal board um, Made a couple sales Sales? Sales Air quotes, sales I don't like any of this, I hate all of it Yeah, why would you ask somebody, how was your day? Tell me about you Because we were like, okay. just, yeah Alright, yeah That freaking ice, bro I know You need to put some cod balls in there no. Anyway, <clears throat> welcome back to the company. We are back and we're going to try to do better. I have pinky promise and I have pinky swear. I guess we'll just start this one off as our segment, the drunk lovebirds. Just me and Bub talking. A lot's oh. happened since the last time we've done a podcast or since the podcast that just you and I have done with Drunk Love Birds. So, you know, I thought about that earlier. I was like, dang, a lot has happened. A lot hasn't happened. We just got married. Were we even engaged <laughs> for the first one? No, we weren't engaged. Th- okay. So, yes, if anybody doesn't know, if y'all don't have us on Facebook, uh, we, me and Bubba have been together for five years, and we finally got married in December, two days before our five-year anniversary, actually. So, that's really cute. Mm, I love that. I forgot about that. <laughs> love that for you, for me. <laughs> it was probably the funniest thing ever. Every single restaurant we went for the honeymoon, they were like, oh, it's a special occasion. It was, oh, it's our anniversary and our honeymoon. They thought I was lying. (laughs) They totally thought I was lying. You're clipping that mic. I'm sorry. I got excited. (laughs) (laughs) No, they just thought you were from like, you had to be from a place called like Cut Off or something. I don't know. You know, that's really, really wild, actually. But on the topic of our wedding, I wanted to ask you, we've never, like, really, really talked about the whole wedding, our whole wedding. What was your absolute favorite part? Like, the absolute most fun for you? I feel like it's, you can categorize each absolute fun part. Yeah. Like, um, when my mom heard the song of choice for us to dance, because I told her for the rehearsal dinner, I was like, are you going to lose it? She's like, you're not going to kill me, right? And I'm like, no, like things are like a sad, mm-hmm. you know, and then she heard uh, the Beatles come out. What was it? Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not familiar with the um, song. God. Yeah. That's but, rough. You should remember that. <laughs> no, I, I, I know how the song goes. I just can't, the name's odd. But, um, no, when it came on, she like looked at me and she go, no, stop, stop. And I'm like. <laughs> This was like the happiest one. <laughs> and the whole time your sister was vibing so hard. It was so, so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, We did our first dance. So super fun fact. Our first dance was um, That's How Strong My Love Is by Otis Redding. He's an oldies singer for sure. He, I don't know when that song came out, but I know it was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, But one night I, when we first moved into this house, I mean, this is like, almost four four or five years ago we were dancing on our back deck and we live on the bayou side and we have a back deck overlooking the bayou and it's really cutesy but we were dancing and just slow dancing and Bubba put that song on randomly and I was like what the heck is that and he said this is gonna be our dance for our wedding and it stuck 
I don't want to cry. That's just so precious. That song came out September 12, 1976. How do you remember that? Because you just make it up and say it with confidence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's one way to do I it. I mean, that's like every single thing I do ever. Speaking of songs for our wedding, we did also completely in the wedding, well, in the wedding with our friends of me and Bub on stage screaming war pigs. Just our best life. And it was so cool looking out. I would like look out to everybody and at one point it was especially Brody Hill. I don't know why. Well, I mean, I could see why he was the first person I saw. He towered over everyone. Um, but he was just over everybody, like hands up, just screaming. And the next time I looked, there was somebody else. Matt was getting it. Like everybody was just, oh my God. We, I had so much fun for our wedding. It was beautiful. Oh, it was an absolute blast. I found a video today of us singing Don't Stop Believing Together. Mm. And I hit a scream for mm. the last chorus. Stop, I forgot about that. And then Mr. Sheremy didn't disappoint with a sloppy solo. Sorry, Zach. No, it wasn't sloppy in the video. I told that to Tim earlier. I was like, yeah, and then Zach comes in and ruins all of it. And I played him and it's like fucking perfect. So like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We um we had a lot. We had all almost all of our friends were at the wedding. There were so many people there that just came and showed our love. And I was thinking about it. <clears throat> trying to think how I want to say that. I thought about our wedding, been thinking about our wedding like every single day. But today I had posted on Snapchat um one screenshot and I'll force or I'll convince Christian to bring the podcast back. And Thinking of friends, like this old this girl who I used to be friends with that I have not seen literally since high school. Like um, four years ago. <clears throat> yeah, you done? Yeah, I'm done. Sorry. Um, I already felt awkward saying it, talking about it's it. It's fine. Um, but I hadn't seen her since high school, which I graduated in 2016. So thanks for that, Christian. Um, but shout out Deidre because she was like me. I, I love that I listened to every single one and I got to thinking about friends and I got really, really sentimental. I was like, oh my God, like all of our friends were there. And then I got even more sentimental because I was like, there's people that I grew up with that we talked about weddings with and they're not, they're not here to experience this with me. You know what I'm trying to, like, I'm talking about? No, 100%. And I thought about it the other day whenever um, you got that Snapchat thinking of a song. And he was like, what what song? We used to jam to it all the time. And I can never, I can't think of it. I'm trying to think of it. I was about to say, yeah. And then Christian Lovell Snapchats me last night. Hey, man, what's the song? And that was. <sighs> I mean, if y'all was kids, y'all, you would have been, what, 12, something like that? No, I was probably, right? he just started driving. So he was 16. So I would have probably been 14. 15 maybe maybe nine i don't know how old he is <laughs> i don't know he looks younger now than he did then i don't know because when i was friends with his sister he always seemed so old but like you know whenever you're in high school and like like young high school like freshman year everybody's older brothers and sisters just seem so much more elite and older than you are and they're really like four years older this is the funniest thing ever I <laughs> whenever we were in elementary school you would go to the bathroom and like it's boys so the bathrooms were never the cleanest, whatever. And at, at Holy Savior, you walk in the bathrooms, and there was just a row of urinals. And not everybody flushed the urinals. <laughs> and, like, it would just be, like, yellow, yellow pee sometimes. <laughs> Stop to throw up. <laughs> That's you, disgusting. And, be, <laughs> and then sometimes you would pee, and you'd be like, yeah, you come out yellow and be like, and you would grab your friend and be like, hey, look, I got big boy pee. And we didn't Stop. realize. Stop, no, that's precious. <laughs> and, yeah, we would show each other our pee. And we just didn't know well, that we just needed to drink that, water. Well, whenever you say, <laughs> and we just pickle juice. Maybe it was weird at that point. It was what a Catholic you school, so we showed each other our pee. It was just our pee. We'd be like, hey, look, it's big boy pee. I mean, it's a cute, it's a cute thought. That's not like the same. Well, it's kind of the same um, wavelength that I was going on. <laughs> yeah, one time I got really excited. It was really, really yellow, and I, I cupped some up and I put it in my pocket to bring it home to show my dad, but. It melted before I got home. That's 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 one of the wildest things you've ever said to me. <laughs> Don't look me in the eyes when you say anything about that. <laughs> that's not true at all. It didn't melt. It didn't, that wouldn't make sense. No, your dad was really proud of you. Actually. I went home with a pocket full of piss. <laughs> <laughs> Probably got beat and put in my closet. <laughs> oh my god, I'm joking. Okay. Oh, he just whipped me. Here's some ASMR to to calm that one. 
Get, get that one down easy. My freaking cup, bro. It was rough. My cup, if you're watching the video, I made this cup. One by one, stone by stone for the wedding. It says Miss... Is it Miss or Mrs.? No. I say Mrs. Ursula. No, you don't. Miss is like... Mrs. M-I-S. No, Miss is single. Or M okay, so Mrs. It says Mrs. Jean Bon. And it's all bedazzled, like literally head to toe. And it's an off-brand Stanley. Which is hilarious because Bubba's mom thinks that it's a real Stanley. And nobody tell her. She thinks I'm super bougie. <laughs> I think that's so precious. This bitch is going to bedazzle a real Stanley. <laughs> I mean, I could, but I charged somebody $300 to do it. How much is a Stanley? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, because, like, I would you charge can buy somebody like $300. How, much is, how long does it take to do a full cup like that, start to finish? This, honestly, this took me, like, three days. Because I would do it, like, if I was working from home the second I had logged off, I would immediately go, like, all right, let's get, let's get a, a portion done. But... I love doing stuff like that. Like, uh, my best friends, they make fun of me. One of them sent me something the other day making fun of me. I love, like, the little tedious, and I know there's somebody that's going to understand what I'm trying to say. Putting each individual rhinestone and having to, like, you don't really have to think about it. It just consumes your brain, but it just, like, it scratches my brain. Yeah? Maybe you scratch it too hard, you think? <laughs> no, it just, it makes me feel good. I don't know. I love it. Like, I, honestly, I, I could bedazzle an entire vehicle. I could I could do an entire car, and I would be the happiest I've ever been because it would probably take me, like, a year. I mean, I get it 100% because literally I got home, finished detailing a vehicle, which also, shout out, mobile detailing by Jomo. It's um, all about Jomo over here. Nice. Um, I got home, and I was exhausted. Like, I don't know why. It had nothing to do with the huge energy drink crash and two cheeseburgers i ate and fried okra on the way home yeah but you felt amazing yeah i, I woke up today feeling hungover from, <laughs> from all the from, nastiness oh yeah but um got home and like putting together a pedal board for me and like seeing that and just taking pictures of it showing to other nerd friends on facebook yeah like you have any nerd cup groups you're in i have so many cup groups but none of them are like active no they are i don't know i don't know how to explain it it's not it's not as interesting as i got 101 think. mics today on my <gasps> pedal board that i put together on the kitchen counter while you were trying to cook last night okay christian mm -hmm. go ahead slay slay girl we love that sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> no it's i remember i told you that one night we were playing phase 10 and I randomly just looked at you and I was like, I don't think you've ever loved anything in your life, like hobby-wise, as much as I love pedals. You know, I remember that. And for whatever reason, that hurts my heart. Like, I'm not I saying do, you don't things. have hobbies, you don't have friends, you don't like doing things. I just, I can't stick to a certain hobby like you can. And I feel like that's another thing that, like, other people can relate to. I just need to find that person. Because, like, I started guitar and then... Well, that was a mess because my nails can't grow long to do guitar, and I have little, uh, I have Tim Vienna sausages on my hands. Hands. I heard that too. Um, so they have to grow long, so I quit guitar, but I would like to get back. Um, I quit guitar, and then I did, I did my cups for a long time, and I was selling them, but honestly, that was just a pain in the butt so bad. We were also getting married. We were, like, we were talking about podcasting at work earlier. Now. Oh, no, headphones. I did my headphones too, if, if you're watching. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but we were talking about podcasting at work and Tim was like, man, you still do that? And I was like, yeah, I just don't have to every single day after work, one, plan something for the wedding. Mm. Like literally since or the last- Or hold me while just, I cry in a puddle of my tears <laughs> over the wedding. Just since the last podcast, I recorded a full album for JP Bourgeois. Mm. I put out a song for myself. I was, about to say, I was thinking about that too. Since we no, you also put out Jean Boy and Company's record since then, right? No, since the last podcast, like just me, Dylan, and JP. Oh yeah, with that one. Well, I know. I don't think whenever we did MJ and Jerry, I don't think uh, Jean Boy's album was out. Yeah. BT Dubs. Um, it was. You can still stream all Jean Boy and Company songs. Yeah. I got a song on the charts in Houston right now, actually. You really? No. <gasps> Why the fuck? No, I do actually. I don't. I don't believe you now. 
I mean, that's fine. It's you like the boy who cried wolf. It was like the one time, was it John Boy and Company or Calling Home? But Calling Home is Bubba's old band from like when we first got together. Who is going to be playing at Beck's Fest? And I'm so stoked about it. Um, that y'all had in Brazil. Y'all was on the charts. No, that's a drum on company. And I truly did not believe you at all. And you pulled it up and like you, they were literally like on the charts. Like it was regularly streamed. Now, mind you, it wasn't Beyonce streamed, but like it was like a big stream in Brazil. That was War was in Brazil and No Next Time was in the Ukraine for Call <gasps> That's what I'm thinking of. Yes. Which, so I know Brazil is definitely not predominantly English, but like the Ukraine, why, that's wild to me. There are people, like, that listen to music that's on their their language, though, because they have, like, K-pop bands. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, the cutesy little boy bands. They remind me of, um, what year would that be? Like, 2010, Justin Bieber? The that's silence. That silence was me. deafening. <laughs> that's a crazy question to ask me. I don't know. But you get what I'm trying to say, though? The cutesy little... No, I, I told you I knew exactly what you're talking about. Oh, I just got... I just got excited talking about him. Sorry. But anyway, the whole point is, like, they listen in America to K-pop all the time. And not all of that is in uh, in English either. But I couldn't fathom listening. Like, there's this guy on TikTok that he translates. I want to say he's Spanish or he's Hispanic. And he translates Spanish music. And it's the funniest thing because the words don't... don't. Well, it's not a uh, correct uh, translation. I mean, one of the scariest things you'll ever hear in your life is taking an American Christmas song, translate it to Russia, Russian, and then translate it back to English. It's so funny that you say that because one time senior year of high school, I was in what what was called, it counted as a history class, but it was really religion. But anyway, um, I and me and this girl were talking about, you know the app Duolingo? Nope. So it's a um, Think Rose Out of Stone, but it's cutesy and it's fun and you play games, whatever. I still have it downloaded on my phone. Um, I also tried to pick up learning Spanish. Never did. But anyway, one day. Um, but I was talking to this girl because she was doing Duolingo too. <laughs> and, she, and she was like, yeah, I really want to learn Russian. And I looked this girl in the eyes and it was one of those just amber moments. And I went, you know, I feel like the devil would probably speak Russian. Like it's such a, a harsh language. And I really thought that she was just going to cry. Just I like her, her face was completely white. She was just like, why the fuck would you say something like that? I was like, I don't know. You, I you, don't know. You have the worst time telling anybody anything whenever you like you panic when for I, one second. <laughs> I get like um like word vomit. Like I just have to say something. Like I can't I can't have any no silence. Silence makes me want to jump off of a bridge. You should try it sometimes. No. Jumping off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Meditating. <laughs> <laughs> oh Let's steal that clip. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if it's because my parents just gave me too much free range growing up that I'm like that, that I can't just sit down and meditate. But like, I was one of those kids that I grew up and I went to sleep with the TV on. The TV was always on. Like, would you watch going to sleep? Um, usually Nickelodeon because I really loved George Lopez growing up. Like, oh, George Lopez, yeah. Bitch, when I well, tell that would you, be the worst I thing, loved. the scariest thing ever when you'd be sleeping. And he's up in the full you, split. <laughs> you wake up, he just... <laughs> <laughs> are the songs uh what means a slow rider the cd no the cds oh the ads tell me how am i supposed to live yeah so 40, i grew up like 43 that. songs and over eight cds <laughs> seven songs over nine cds or like how i still i still wake up like randomly in the middle of the night i've always done it and full circle moment and so I've always woke up around like two, three o'clock. It doesn't matter if I go to sleep at eight o'clock, twelve o'clock. If I go to sleep at one thirty, like I'm gonna wake up around two, three o'clock. If I wake up before that or after that, it's because of something. But my whole life I've done that. And and whenever I was talking about the uh, the friends earlier, this one girl, she's always like the old friends. She's always on my mind. I just truly, genuinely hope nothing but the most amazing things for her she deserves it all um her mom i don't know how what it exactly was i don't know if it was like a faith-based thing or like a um just like 
spirituality thing. I don't know. But she always told me, she was like, you know, uh, three o'clock is like devil's hour. I was about to bring that up. That's crazy. <gasps> That's what? No. You don't say it all. I could say it. But if you say it, then I'm not gonna, never going to sleep again. Yeah, but also think about what time you would normally go to sleep and what time you would normally wake up. And it's just in the middle. No, that's what I literally just said. Like, it doesn't matter if I go to sleep at 8 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I could go to sleep at 1.30. I'm waking up some point between 2 and 3 o'clock. Okay, let me blow your mind real quick. It doesn't matter if I go to sleep at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 12 p.m. I'm waking up at 6 a.m. No matter what. It doesn't matter if I go to sleep at 4 a.m. I'll wake up at 6 a.m. with a okay. mental alarm clock. So, so I, if you practice that, if your body just gets accustomed to it, you'll just do it no matter what. So you're telling me, like, for the rest of my life, I'm screwed? No, you just need to meditate. <laughs> <laughs> Try jumping off a bridge, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Full circle. But <laughs> what was I even getting at now? Your friends, oh, yeah. my friend's mom. Um, And honestly, if she watches this, she probably is going to know. She, uh, well... I don't know. Maybe not everybody remembers those kinds of things. But my mom told me that was the devil's hour. So all the time, like for years growing up, like I would wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, I'm like possessed. Like something is wrong with me. Like I have something. I, I'm possessed. A demon is inside of me that I wake up that time. And it, honest to God, that was I mean, like eighth grade or so. Like that stuck with me so, so hard until like a year ago. Whenever I started like jumping into my faith. What's one of the weirdest things that ever stick with you ever? Random, makes zero sense, you'll never forget it for the rest of your life. You think about it all the time. Like, just like a tidbit that somebody told me, like a fact or just a thing? Just random. I have so, so many of those. I'll tell you one. Yeah, you the, start. The thing, the thing that you said, just a fact. Uh, Y'all had those, like, plastic agendas at school. Oh, yeah, and then you scratch the front, and it's, like, that weird material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And in the bottom corners, they had random facts for us. Oh, and, yeah, I think I do remember that. Um, I remember one of them was, you were never more than six feet away from a spider ever at all times. <gasps> Christian, uh, do not let me forget to show you the spider I saw earlier today. Oh, yeah, you showed me, yeah. I seen you the Snapchat? Yeah, cook some rice. Yeah, because we need to feed the thing. He's home. That's something that sticks with me. So, I don't know if everybody, like, on the bayou side or, like, in this Raceland area gets black widows outside. But we apparently get... What was that? Oh, it was a fridge. Nice. Um, We get black widows. And one time, whenever we had first moved in, it was, like, the second or third one I saw. So, I was already freaking out. I was, like, kill it with fire. Just burn the house down. Whatever. Well, I'd seen one and Bubba was at work. <laughs> I remember so, so distinctly. I was laying in the bathtub. So it had to be a Saturday. Bathtub. I was laying in the bathtub and I texted Bub and I was like, oh, there's a black widow by the uh, by the stairs under the carport. You need to get it, whatever. And he said, no, that's my friend. <laughs> it's not that funny. And he said, no, that's my friend. And uh, oh, he said, no, that's my friend. Um. I've been feeding it. I said, what you been feeding it? And he goes, your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that there was like zero hesitation. Just immediately, your hair. <laughs> it's not that funny, but it's so funny. That's fucking hilarious, actually. <laughs> hey, make me a drink real quick. Uh, it's not way really. harder for me to get up. It's really not. Yeah, Amber's making me a drink right quick. I'll tell that story. While she can't defend herself. Um, That's rude. There was, for our wedding, um, in one of her eyes, or in both her eyes, she has astigmatism, but in one of them, they have like a weight on her contact so that it holds correctly inside of her eye. Well, um, before the wedding, I'd asked her, thank you, I'd asked her, I was like, yeah, you're going to... Um, Wear your contacts or glasses? She's like, no, I hate the way I look with my glasses on. I was like, baby, you look stunning, like, regardless. I love the way you look with your glasses on. But, um, she was like, no, no, whatever. So, move forward, and, um, we did a first look. We did a first look, um, which so many people were confused about it. Like, you're not supposed to see your bride. And I'm like... Dude, Which you, is why, but also it was all guys that said that. Yeah, but like also, yeah, but like also like 
Do you not think we talked about this, man? That was my... <clears throat> excuse me. That was such a big thing about our wedding. It's like going forward, people were like, oh, well, you should do this. Did you think about this? Oh, you're going to do that? Well, what about this? And it's like, do you fuck it? Like... You really think for a second, like, this has not been my dreams. My Pinterest board hasn't been completely built since I was in the ninth grade. I like, saw you add something to your Pinterest board the other day for for the wedding, and I was like, oh, fuck. The other day? <laughs> I was like, oh, she's leaving my ass. <laughs> the next one. It's my divorce board. My divorce party board. If you're going to move that, you got to start talking <laughs> while you move it, and then move it. I'm sorry. Do you think any of that was caught? Yeah, but... I'll I got it now. It's my divorce party Pinterest board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, so um, we did the first look, and good Lord, my heart was beating out my chest. I'm sitting there, and I'm looking forward, and the photographer, I could hear her coaching Amber to walk behind me. Like, all right, now walk, walk, walk. And, like, I couldn't feel you or hear you. No, I know you at all. Like, but I could feel the presence behind me, and I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" And I was like freaking out, <laughs> freaking out. Sorry. And she was like, uh, "Okay, Amber, now place your hand on his shoulder, and you place your hand on my shoulder, and I just oh, holy <laughs> shit!" And I was losing my mind, and like I started tearing up, and like. I just know you wanted me to cry so bad, but like I was. It's not that I wanted you to cry. Don't even start. No, that. no, that's not what I'm getting at. Okay. I'm saying I was like, I guess it's all bride's dreams to have their husband ball down crying. It's whatever just it the sweetest, sweetest sentiment because like men don't cry. So seeing a grown man just cry yeah. at something like that for a wedding is like. But I'm it's a sitting lot. there and like my nerves are so. I didn't know like, I don't know. I didn't know what to think at all. And then finally about to do the turnaround, and I hear Stacy, our photographer, go, uh, okay, Christian. And I'm just looking forward, and I see my friend Wenton Young's head, <laughs> this peanut-built, <laughs> Lil Bill, retired-ass, little head pops up, bald-ass motherfucker, pops his head up from the stairs and just mm -hmm. smiles. And I'm like, my eyes light up, and I'm like, please. Please. Like, you're behind me. Well, he was, Your hand's on my shoulder. Well, I thought he was bringing you... you yeah, he was. Oh, so he wasn't just... No, he wasn't just doing that. It doesn't matter. I was like... My eyes, I was like, just no. 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 Like, she's taking pictures. He yeah, he probably really didn't and, realize what's going on. He's never been married before. Yeah, but at that point, he's just... Mm -hmm. Smiling at me still. And then he shows me an Amazon package that's for me. That the drummer of the band, Tim, brought for me. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> You don't think that could have waited till <laughs> This is one of the after, most important moments. After my first look at my wedding, none of that could have waited. That's crazy. So then after that, we get that out of the way. You hand me the picture of my grandpa to put in my coat. I lost it then. Yeah. But um, we knock out our pictures, yada, yada, move forward. I see you upstairs. You're about to walk down. And I start like, Ooh. I'm freaking out, panicking again. I'm like, holy shit. That's because that's one thing that like I always was so nervous about is having a panic attack at the altar the night of my wedding. I thought and like about it's something it. that like I can't control. Yeah. You know? And I was like, oh please. And like the second it's in your mind, it's like because my worst fear is to have a panic attack. Well, and that's why I never brought it up was because I knew that if I brought it up, you would have thought about it and it would have happened. Oh, no. I was thinking about it the entire time. So I was like, oh, please, <laughs> please, please. And then you start walking down. And then whenever you and your dad made it to the front and y'all stopped for the pictures right there. I started, we was there forever, too. Yeah, I started bawling. And I was like, holy shit. And then... um you couldn't see any of it because you didn't have your I, contacts. Or so glasses. that was the moral of the story. I could see. I I can't see really far, but the eye was not that far. It was just I, I I was regardless. I was like blacked out. I was good until the moment I came down the stairs and I made the turn. Excuse me. And I made the turn to like walk left and then turn to the right, walk down the aisle. Um. But there weren't enough chairs at the ceremony for everybody to sit. So there was so many people standing up right there. And apparently the videographer said she has it. That whenever I turned, I just went, oh. And my mouth like dropped. And after that, I was blacked out. Because 
I I knew how many people we invited, and I knew how much people how many people love us and told told us they were coming. It didn't register in my brain how many faces and eyes were going to be staring at me, and I was blacked out. I have no idea. Well, that was the best thing for me because after y'all walked up, insert picture here. <laughs> Once we got our <laughs> wedding photos back, the pure look of horror in my <laughs> eyes. Between I know exactly you and- what you, me and Kay, uh, me and my friend were. I was showing her all the picture, the pictures we got so far the other day, and I was like, I feel so bad, but Bubba looks horrifying right here, and she is. She loves Bubba. She grew up with Bubba since kindergarten, so she couldn't care less what she was about to say. And she goes, "No, he looks terrifying." Oh, I, I look. Yeah, I was just and like in my mind, I was like. Thinking to myself, I'm like, all right, this is the picture. Smile. So in my mind, in my mind, this was my face. <laughs> just a cute little smile. Just a smirk going on. I can see and where this you is thought that. It, it just. Yeah, no, it was, it was horror. And dude, I was trying to smile. I remember holding your hands, just sitting there, just trying to smile. And you're like, you're okay? And I'm like, yeah. And you're like, okay. And I didn't realize you were trying to let go of my hands. I thought we were supposed to hold hands the whole time. I've never been married I mean, you before. Can do, you can do know. it however you want. I just, I don't know. I watched a YouTube video that morning and like, that was it. It's the only, the only <laughs> just thing wanted to I make had. sure everything. Yeah, just a, like how to get married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tutorial. Well, I did it for dummies. I read the book. Getting getting married for dummies. I think, oh, that too. I was about to say, I think five years in of being with somebody, you should probably understand that how life goes with mosquito. Um, that was impressive. Oh, fucking oh. lived. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be stronger. Um, it was leading up to the wedding, like literally the second we got engaged, for whatever reason, that gave everybody, or everybody felt that that gave them the right to have something to say about our relationship, which is my favorite conversation now to have with other married women. Um, <clears throat> because... I don't know. We just, me and Bubba have this thing where we always go back and forth. Like we pick all the time. Like it's whatever. It means zero behind it. It's just how we show our love, whatever. But people would be like, oh, just wait till y'all married. Oh, y'all almost sound like a married couple. What that? What is that supposed to mean? So like, are you telling me like the day, the next day when we wake up, we're just going to look at each other and be like, you know what? I actually decide I want to be a terrible person forever. I don't want to make your life so miserable. Well, it's funny that you say that because literally after I told you my vows, okay, but that was no. You looked at me and you said, "Okay, Christian, mine are a bit longer." No, that's not how I went. And you flipped me off. You told me my vows were shit. Do you remember my vows? It's disgusting. People hate that. Everybody, a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people like ASMR. Nick Bourgeois loves it. No, I don't think no. it's him. No, yeah. Mm. What it was, he was like, man, he's like, what it, oh, it was like Velcro or something. He was like, I'm be laying down and let's put that on YouTube and I just go to sleep. That's my the headphones. kind of thing that like it scratches your brain. Like this, like. Mmm. Some people, like, honestly, to me, a little bit, but it, get, it got too far, like, I got too far down the TikTok ASMR rabbit hole. If that is not a Gen Z sentence that ever did. Wait, say that again? I got too far down the TikTok. ASMR TikTok <laughs> rabbit hole. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it got to the point where they're, like, doing, like, slime. Like, you know what slime is, right? Yeah, like, I grew up kids with Nickelodeon. Play with? Oh, no, that's like the a different kids, form. It is really different, actually. God damn. Um, <laughs> well, like, did the kids play with, you know, like, have you seen? Yeah, they you, make slime, yeah. Okay, yeah, I like got a glue and stuff. I mean, anyway. we had Play-Doh when we grew up. Same, same. It's more like, do you remember Flown? It had the little beads in it. Yeah, And it was, yeah, like, yeah, slimy. Yeah. It's more like that. I know what you're talking about. Oh. Well, your face just looks so confused right now. <laughs> but anyway, when but they started smiling. doing that, it gave me ick. It was so cringy. It reminded me of the sound of like when, like when I, the other day when I was stirring my mac and cheese and you were like, stop, stop doing that right yeah, now. Yeah, just fucking eat it. Literally just stop. Well, that sound though, that's where it gets too far. But like the. Well, that wasn't a good one. What's that chick that does the. Lamborghini. <laughs> I'm going to start doing Remind that. Remind me I have one to show you about that. that. Right there. Zam. 
<laughs> cowboy up, boy. Yeah, oh, yeah, since it's so cowboys. <laughs> but while we were talking about that, it made me think of it. I was trying to talk to you about it the other day, and you were just like, all right, this is a terrible conversation. About Makes how sense. I, like, I'm... I'm I'm considered a Gen Z because I was born in 98, but I also grew up kind of in the millennial era more than I could be a Gen Z. Like my little sister is 19, so she's like full on Gen Z, like she's in there, but I'm like a mix of both. And I feel like there should be a barrier just for like a, a few years. Like honestly, People like try to do 98 that. and 99, like there should be, or like... No, ninety eight, ninety nine. Because I know some people that was born in two thousand. They don't count. They ain't in my. They ain't in my square. Um, but I feel like there should just be like ninety eight, ninety nine should have our own term. Okay, that's cute. Zillennial. But people. <gasps> Wait. Yeah, exactly. People are trying to do that to make themselves feel like feel better, as if any of it matters. Well, it's twenty twenty four, so it. Does because like if anybody was like, what a dumbass, he's a millennial. No, whenever I just said the word millennial, it clicked. I'm pretty sure I have seen that on TikTok. That exactly. other people are on that page. Yeah, TikTokers like make things up to make themselves feel better instead of meditating, finding out things that are good for them, finding other problems. As you rip that fucking nicotine stick. Hi, I'm Amber, and I'm addicted to nicotine. And you're watching the company. Ding. Um, I don't know. That just threw me off so bad, all of it. My brain is like on 17 different planes right now. Always. It is. And that's part of why I can't meditate. Because like if I literally just give myself a second to stop and try to breathe. Like going to sleep at night. Like Bert Kreischer is my... It's the Bert Kreischer's, first of all, my favorite. And maybe later I'll tell y'all a story about Seriously? we almost got married by Bert Kreischer. Bert Kreischer's your favorite comedian? He's a, he's. Is Bert Kreischer your favorite comedian? Sorry, probably that was so. the question. Probably. Uh, I don't know. I love Chris D'Elia, but he fell off ever since he had those accusations. And I haven't looked into, like, whatever came of those. And then, of course, Nothing. Theo Vaughn. Like, he's there, too. Like a, Theo Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> I motherf- always say if we put Bubba's mom and Theo Vaughn in a room, the world would explode. Oh, or or be better. I don't know. Because got them two motherfuckers and just put them in a room. <laughs> we'd be like, we can finally move on. They would, they would be outrageous. Because Bubba's mom is also so outrageous. Literally, we're getting ready for the wedding. And it's all my bridesmaids and the moms. And the girls doing hair and makeup. Like, two or three times. Like, your mom would just say something. And everybody. Like, she's just having a conversation with your sister. She's minding her business, doing her own. Everybody could hear them though, would crack up laughing. And like two or three times, the girls were like, Bruh, his mama is something. Like, oh, she's something. Yeah, them two were in a room. My mom would just be sitting there and be like, Oh, Theodore Vonkowski, whatever. Is <laughs> He'd say is. something about training a squirrel. She'd be like, oh, That's so interesting. No, she would be like, Oh, uh, and he'd be like, No, he would say some shit and be like, Yeah, man, they need to capture all them. All them squirrels, because, uh, I mean, they, there's so many squirrels, and they have thumbs, too. Imagine if, like, them squirrels go into them, them gas stations and start buying lottery tickets. Last thing you want, squirrels winning the lottery. And then they, You're they not would, wrong. They would go buy golf carts and go-karts, and they'd be all over. My mom would just, yeah, but imagine if squirrels played Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> what if a squirrel played guitar? Do you think monkeys can play guitars? Mm, they Have you kill, ever seen they that? They can kill people. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, I could kill somebody if I wanted to. No, you couldn't. I totally could. We had that discussion today at work, actually. about really? how Yeah, how you just randomly... Sometimes I'll literally just be sitting there, people, minding my good business. Maybe planning uh, to surprise my wife with flowers at work. And Amber would just walk in and go, you know, I could kill you, right? You know, I can just poison you, like, very slowly, and you would never know. That is true. And, you know, I know exactly what plant to use. They would never find it. When was the last time you practiced witchcraft? Before I turned to faith. So, about a year ago. That's the craziest that you? thing you've ever said in your life. Well, I never, like, I never actively practiced. I just did the things of, like, writing notes and burying them and then, like, burning them and, like... I, like I never got like big into crystals or like spells. Like I never, I never dabbled with spells because I grew up. I was raised Catholic. Now I'm 
I, I found I'm Christian, but I was raised Catholic. So I always have had God and the Holy Spirit in my heart, but the, uh, yeah, see, so you say yeah, you weren't into you I'm weren't right. into those crystals, man. I, I knew this guy Leroy in Lockport, <laughs> and he was into those crystals. Sometimes he would smoke them, and uh, he would just stay up for uh, either five minutes or five months. Yeah, we. But know. he would still get the same accomplished. <laughs> That is, you know what? That's honestly a really good point. You know what? Methamphetamines is an epidemic. Um. Did you see a video of Jelly Roll? Yeah, yeah. How was he? Isn't he so precious? Oh, yeah. He's, he's the most he's precious. Awesome. I just want to give him the biggest hug. Never forget to tell him that we booked him at the venue. Yeah. We, we booked Jelly Roll at the venue. Hold well, on. also, if you don't. We booked Jelly Roll at the venue one time, and uh, it was the night of... And we had Struggle uh, Jennings, yeah. which is Wailing Jennings' grandson. Which is still so wild to me. I and don't he know showed up, and we, had, we we sat in the back. We had a heart-to-heart -heart about our moms just sitting there just saying how we loved our moms, which is a crazy conversation to have. I think it's cute. I think all people love their moms. Well, yeah. not all, but whatever. Yeah. Hashtag insert Gypsy Rose. <gasps> um, Christian. Uh, no. That's going to give us so many streams. Um <laughs> But we're like, we're just sitting there having a conversation. And then the other manager, Brennan, walks in and he's like, hey, man, uh, where's Jelly Roll? And he's like, I don't know, man. We should try calling Also, we him. should backtrack. This is in like 2018. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Start there also. And he's like, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe we should try calling him. We call his manager and he's like, oh, yeah, man. He's on house arrest in Tennessee. Yeah. He's like, <clears throat> the crazy thing is you don't just get house arrested. Yeah. You don't just, just get. You don't uh, wake up house arrested going like. Oh, don't worry. Damn. Worry. It's not a parking boot. I can't make the travel to Louisiana which today is, like I had planned for almost an entire year. Which it is a parking boot, honestly. Now that you say that. I mean, now I that mean, I say that's that. one way to put it. That's pretty funny. I mean, same, same like laundry sauce. It just depends how you look at it. Laundry sauce. Yeah. Would you, um, who was it? Hmm. Somebody said sky raisins. What's the sky raisin? A fly. <gasps> Stop. That's a good one. And I know who said it. I'm not going to say her name right now. <laughs> or actually, I'll do this. All right, now we're back in. <laughs> now that I told her who said that. You just could have did a bleep. Hmm? You could have did a bleep. Yeah, but now I know I'm just going to cut the whole thing. Yeah, that was a rough one. We're just, <laughs> we're just not. Um, on, that turn, on that note, though, so I seen online somewhere, it's probably TikTok, somebody called laundry detergent laundry sauce, and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense to me. Like, it clicks in my brain. Laundry sauce. And I told that to Bubble one time, and he pulled the whole, oh, y'all down the bayou people. Talking about holy boards. What y'all called him? Washer toss? Washer toss. That sounds so I would, Yankee. Washer toss. Washer toss. No, it's holy boards. Everybody down the bayou calls it, it's holy boards. Um, but then you, Just you hit me. Just because y'all all call it the same thing doesn't mean y'all all aren't wrong. There's something else y'all racing people call uh, <coughs> something, and it's just straight up wrong. But what got me thinking about all of that, like contemplating life, was when you went, oh, so when you go to church and you get communion, what you call that? Jesus bread. <laughs> it really had me thinking, because down to body people are so, so simple. It's like how... Excuse me. Also, let me specify by you. I mean, uh, cut off La Rose, Galliano, go to Meta. Um, go to Meta. I heard that one too. Sorry. Um, our streets are numbered. It's first street all the way down to God. I don't know. I don't know if it goes past the hundreds. It's hundred something though. They probably go. I don't know. It yeah, doesn't matter. It definitely does. What street your mom was on? It got to. Well, I'm not. Well, we're not gonna say. Yeah. It. <laughs> um. So yeah, it got to. Which one's social? Lives. Uh, <laughs> but so Bubba's dad, if you know Bubba, it all makes sense because Bubba's dad knows anything. Like it well, might be a lie, he and will he just give says you an, it. My dad will always give you an answer. Yes, That's he will so never. Funny. I promise you're not gonna hear this man say, "I don't know." Like you're not. But I asked him one day, and I was like, "Hey, do you know why the Bayou?" First of all, I asked him why it was East and West because one time I was drunk and I was looking at the map and. And in my drunk head, it wasn't east and west, but when I pulled it up sober, it was east and west. No, you told me east and west, and I was like, no, it's on the north and the south side of the bayou, though. Yeah, and then I look, I pulled it up, and I was like, oh my god, you're right, but yeah. it is where we were at. 
like in the time because it curves. And oh. I never, it never crossed my mind. But anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, so I asked him about that and I was like, okay, you know, that makes sense. Excuse me. Um, and then I asked him, I was like, do you know why all the numbers, why the streets are numbered? And he was like, they're just simple people. And I was like, oh my God, you're going to make fun of me too? And he did that thing. He was like, no, no, no. I would never make fun of you for asking me a question. It was just like, oh, just me. listen. Yeah, just you. Um, but it's just because we're simple people. Like, you call it as you see it. It makes sense. I promise you I can find a street with no maps, no GPS, no nothing down the bayou a thousand times quicker than I could over here. I would just be driving up and down LA1 doing my darndest. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, my point is that y'all racing people think that y'all are inferior to down the bayou no. people. And we should have a full-on duel, a brawl, which no. did happen. There is no, the race on people that, and do not think they're more inferior than the down body people. We know it. It's way different. And then you come up well, with the smart folks to North Raceland. Okay, well, we live in North Raceland. Hashtag. Yeah, but also what's across, <laughs> across from us? Shh. What's down from us? No, but uh, going back on my dad. <laughs> what do you, uh, so... We're sitting, we're sitting there. This is shit. It must have been like the beginning of October or something. This past year. Yeah, and we were at his neighbor's house, which is like also family, and me, Colton, Caleb, we're all sitting down, whatever, and we had told my dad something, and um, how was it worded? I was like, yeah, we're going to go do that next Friday. And he went, the 13th? And we were like, oh, shit, it's Friday the 13th. And then you were like, yeah, I'm thinking about going to get a tattoo. Blah, blah, yes, blah, but me. five years I've been asking you. So my dad goes, um, damn, bro. You know how often that actually happens? Friday the 13th on, like in once October? A year. Oh, in October specifically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I don't. How often? But it was once a year, the 13th of October pops up. And we told him that. But the best part was he he sat up and he got all comfortable. Watch. And he, he looked up. He was looking at the sky. He was thinking. If, that's how he thinks. And he goes, well, if you don't count leap year, that's every like five and a half years that that I happens. I forget that leap year exists. My, I've never heard somebody say a sentence that was so full of shit. I know. He probably does know. He, but he looked up and he did math in his head. Probably, All yes. of y'all about men, are, we're, we're all great with math. Yeah. Nah, son. You don't know the weeks and how it turns and how the months work and then the leap year and then all of that. I mean, I imagine you probably I just know my dad and he just doesn't Do know that know? information. Do you know I actually work with, I don't know if I told you, I work with a girl whose birthday is uh, February 29th. So, for her last birthday, that was actually February 29th, she He's technically would have been six, like, if you, you know, do the thing. Yeah. So, they threw her a full six-year-old's birthday party, like, had a bounce house. It was just full of colors. Like, I don't know. Think, like, mermaids, Paw Patrol stuff. Like, it was a full six-year-old's birthday party, and that is one of the coolest things that I've ever heard. That's awesome. I had a dream last night for my birthday coming up that my dad bought me a Rolex. Really? And sour, like, warheads, <gasps> hot dogs. Ugh. Yeah. That's... a pack of four of them. I think I need to throw up. So I was going to text my dad this morning and go, like, hey, man, I had a dream that you bought me a Rolex. If you, like... I don't know if, if you, you believe in those things. If you can't think of anything to buy me, you know... Um, but you also bought me warhead-flavored hot dogs. Or it would be worse... Hot dog flavored warheads. Oh. oh, baby. That's money right there. I literally almost just spit my drink out. Mm -hmm. That's worse than pickle flavored vodka. Well, yeah, that's way different. I love pickle vodka. I took a shot of pickle vodka before we started this to try to get my nerves out. I surprised you with flowers yesterday, and then I stopped at Nacos, and I was starving, so I bought another cheeseburger. <laughs> Dude, I'm like Randy from fucking Trailer Park Boys. I eat all the cheeseburgers. <laughs> But, um, and then I almost, cook cheeseburgers. Yeah, then I come home and I was like, let's have cheeseburgers. Um, but I almost bought a pickle and brought it to Miss Ursula, my stepmom. 
She loves. If she does love pickles. I didn't know she loved them that much. But I didn't know if she was gonna be working or they were even open or yada yada. Mm. Um. I don't know why that's so funny to me. <laughs> just thinking about it, it's just so sweet. And you know, whenever I texted her um, the picture of your flowers that you brought me, she said, um, "Oh, that's so sweet." Whatever with some emojis and yada yada. The next message goes, "I guess we can keep him around." My stepmom said that. <laughs> yes. It's awesome. It's it was hilarious. So I finished that finished detailing that vehicle, and then I had, um, I walked inside the hand. Do you what go I inside tell. people's houses? Actually, I normally, I try to avoid or it. Or just the women that their husbands aren't home. Just the women that their husbands aren't home. Good, yes, Naturally, yeah. yeah. No. That makes sense. So I always try to avoid talking to people. Like, I'm there to do a job. I'm not having fun. Yeah. Like, so, leave the cash outside if you can. Some things are, yeah. Like, I've done one detail where I literally, it was the neighbors. I did one person's vehicle. And then they were like, hey, my neighbor wants hers done tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So I went to her vehicle and, like, literally just walked up. Her car was unlocked, detailed it inside and out. There was cash in the mm -hmm. thing, and I just went home. I love that. That's like people, like, whenever you see people in Walmart and they do the good thing and they're like, hey, keep walking. Don't, yeah. don't, you don't have to make eye contact with me. Like, just, just keep walking. I don't want to talk to nobody in Walmart. I did that to actually one of our really good friends. I'll tell you about it later. Um, but I saw her in the Walmart aisle, and I don't know if she saw me, but I really did. Like, just turn and go to the next one. And she's really one of our really good friends. And I just, I don't, I, when I'm at Walmart, like, I just don't have the energy. And I'm so, I know that seems really shitty of me. I just, I, I can't. Like, I'm already so overstimulated. No, so, I mean, yeah, I completely agree with that. You know my terms on that. Mm. But, um... You're talking about detail. Doing a vehicle. Not talking to Yesterday, anybody. yeah. So I finished a detail yesterday. And I was saying I always try to avoid, but I grabbed a gallon of water and I drank like, I don't know, maybe an eighth of it on the way there. And mm -hmm. I chugged a rain energy drink. Um, and like I was 20 minutes into the detail and I was like, nah, fuck, I'm out of the pee. And I always try to just hold it. Just mm -hmm. stop at a gas station or whatever like that. I couldn't. I think about that all the time when you're doing cores. Oh, yeah. If I got to take a shit, like, I, I just tell the, the customer, like, hey, um, I forgot everything. Oh, no. I got to go run to Walmart. Okay, so you said rain. Rain or Red Bull? Rain, every day of the week. All right, anyway, what? moving forward to my story for the third time. Oh, there's more? Yeah, we're talking about the flowers. Oh, well, I will. You won't believe I'm trying. So... I finished the vehicle, and I go in the house, and I'm like, um, and it was a closest friend, it was a close friend's close friend, mutual, whatever, um, so she's like, are you sure it's this amount, and I look, and I look at her, and I tell her the same thing, I told her the same thing I tell every customer, I went, hey, look, this is all I charge, if you want to pay me more, that's 100% up to you, and but, they usually pay you more, you know, Oh, no, the last three well, times I've said it. Well, people leave a tip it. regardless. No, the last three times I said it, they went, oh, okay, here's the money. Yeah. Like a tip regardless plus a little bit extra. Yeah. But um, she had tipped me 40 bucks. So when I left there, I was going to go surprise you for lunch, but it was like 145 already. So I had already planned on going surprise you at work. I was like, oh, man, let me grab some flowers. So fast forward, I get to the flower shop. After the, This is the third one I stop at. I walk in and the woman walks up and she goes, hey, how can I help you? And I said, uh, I'm going to surprise my wife at work. And she went, oh. <laughs> and I went, oh, I want to bring her flowers. And she went, okay, what do you want? And I said, she likes red flowers. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, I went, roses. She likes mm -hmm. roses. And I said, mm -hmm. but her favorite colors are white, pink, glitter. <laughs> Diamonds. Glitter is ca <laughs> it's all categorized as a color. Yeah, and she goes, I have some white roses. And I went, I mean, some pink roses. And I went, I think that's perfect. So you remember when we had the conversation about what my fl favorite flower is? Yeah, we did it like eight times. Do like, you like tulips? Tulips are number one. Mm. Mm. No, it stops after that. I don't fucking know. Okay, but also you didn't get tulips. 
And you told them my favorite flowers was roses. I just showed. No, I said she likes roses. And I, in that com last conversation we had, I told you I don't like roses. You don't like roses? I you really, have roses planted outside of our house right now. Yeah, because my sister got them for our wedding. So it's going to be like a thing. Like they're oh. our rose bush. And then whenever you have a kid, you're supposed to bury their umbilical cord in your rose bush. And you wrote. Right, Y'all cut off people to fucking no, get down. What? Huh? No, what? It's a thing. Like it's a, re it's a thing. Like, there's girls there. I know this one person in specific, and I don't think she listens to our podcast because she told me before that it feels too personal, and she feels like she're, she's invading our personal life. So she's probably never going to hear it, but I'll show her a snippet of this. Um, that she had her kid, her first kid's umbilical cord. Like, they keep them, like, dried up. Like, they dr you dry out the umbilical cord, and, like, you put it, like, a little little baggie or something i don't know what they do with it um but she that's what she did with her i used to know this guy down the street <laughs> yeah. he would sell baggies of fucking <laughs> umbilical cords. cords people would think they'd be getting the eight ball but they were getting that real dime piece you know what i'm saying that's a that's kind of a theo of honism um but anyway so it was like dried up in a little baggie and she was going through an old jewelry box and the umbilical cord was just chilling she had no idea what happened with it she thought she had lost it threw it away by accident i don't know it was just imagine a piece of that because like to me that's like a human organ it no, would be like when is. i got my appendix out if my mama kept it and she she dried it honestly that is your property it, you could keep an organ after they take it out of you it's fucking yours i don't know if that's how that works it's fucking yours it feels illegal it's it's no more it belongs to you more than it belongs to anybody on the face of it. It feels illegal for them to be able to keep it. Well, I mean, really, technically, if you want to go I mean, that, keep your, on that route, you can keep your teeth. It also really belongs to, that is a good point, but it also, your organs really belong to your mama because your mama made them. And then it belongs to her mom because her mama made her and then she made it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that could go so far down the line. So we just need to bring all of our organs to Adam and Eve, if you believe it. Basically. But you can keep teeth. And the only way they identify a dead body that's, like, completely decayed is fucking dental records. Yeah, that is a good point. I don't know. You kind of just shattered my brain there for a sec, bub. Yeah, but if you only have, like, one tooth, good luck. I would pull all of your teeth out first, and I would scatter them. If you killed me? Yeah. I would scatter your teeth around. They would never be able to find all 26 of them. I don't have more than 26 teeth. I thought it was, is it 32? And both no, of those numbers stuck out of You're thinking of the letters of the alphabet. Oh, shit. Am I? I don't know. It might be con uh, adjacent. Or con hey, Siri. How many teeth does an adult have? I was born with a full head of teeth. <laughs> 32. I told yeah. you. Those numbers stuck out. Yeah, I, I but, know my alphabets and I know my teeth. But I have all four wisdom teeth out, too. You have wisdom teeth out? No, like they're out my gums. Oh no, like that, like like protruded. Yeah, like I need to get them out because I bite my cheek. I bite my, I bit my cheek earlier today, and it was. Bleeding. You bite your cheek because you wisdom teeth. Yeah. That's why that happens. Yeah, because they grow. No, I feel like you just tail. Oh, like you specifically. No, yeah, me. Oh. That's why I said I. Like normal people just bite their cheek. This is a stupid conversation. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't think that's stupid. That was a wild conversation. I should have said. All right, take a break. <laughs> 